Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a horror film called Session 9. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Danvers State Hospital, a psychiatric institution that has remained empty for more than a decade, is being turned into a town hall. The government invites several companies to submit their proposals to clean up the asbestos from the building. One of the companies interested in submitting a bid is the Hazmat Elimination Company, owned by Gordon Fleming. Gordon is stressed with his newborn baby Emma, and it is evident from the tired look on his face when he shows up with his associate, Phil, to survey the hospital. Phil notices his weariness, so he tells Gordon that he's there for him if he needs help. Soon, the security guard at the facility approaches them and lets them know that Bill Griggs, who will lead the tour at the hospital, will be arriving soon. As they drive to the complex, Gordon tells Phil that they're not the first company that showed up to survey the hospital. A company called American Yankees has made quite a low bid with a promise to do the job quickly. Phil points out that Griggs likes the bids fast and low, so Phil asks Gordon if he could do the negotiations, but Gordon says he'll do it himself. As they pass by the hospital, Phil is dazzled by the building's facade. Griggs starts the tour by pointing out that the layout of the building, which was finished in 1871, looks like a bat, with one wing for female patients and the other for males. Griggs couldn't tear down the place because it is listed in the National Historic Register. Griggs leads them to the dining area and tells them that it will be turned into the municipal archives. Phil and Gordon point out that the tiles in the room are loaded with asbestos, so they have to be removed. Griggs tells them that the other companies did not mention that to him. Griggs then takes the two men to the female wing, known as Ward C, but they have to go through Ward A, where the most extreme patients were once confined. While Gordon stares at the chair across the hall, he hears an eerie voice call out to him. They continue the tour down the tunnel once used as a fallout shelter, where Gordon notices ducks that need some work. After the tour, Phil tells Griggs that the whole building can be cleaned up of asbestos within three weeks, but Gordon insists that it can be done within two weeks. Phil comes across a room filled with magazine cutouts pasted to the walls and calls the attention of the two other men. Griggs discloses that it was a room used for art therapy and creative expression to boost the patient's self-esteem. Gordon stares at the pictures on the wall, wondering what went wrong with the patient confined to that room. Upon exiting the building, Phil realizes that he left his bag inside, so he goes back to retrieve it. While waiting for Phil, Gordon tells Griggs that he wants to match the bid made by the American Yankees because he really needs the job. He assures Griggs that the cleanup can be done within a week. Later, Gordon looks at photos of his family while he's sitting in his car outside their house. When he looks outside, he sees his wife, Wendy, taking their baby inside their home, greeting him with a faint smile. Soon, he gets out of the vehicle carrying his bag and a bundle of flowers. His wife tells him that the flowers are lovely and asks him what the occasion is. Soon, Gordon and his employees start working to remove the asbestos at the hospital. Gordon's nephew, Jeff, tries to operate the floor removal machine, but the vehicle suddenly shuts down, so Mike, another member of the crew, tells Jeff to check the breaker box. Jeff reluctantly tells Mike that he can't do it because he has nyctophobia, a fear of the dark. Mike goes down to the basement to plug in the machine, but he notices a light in the storage room, so he goes inside to investigate. He notices a box marked evidence on top of a shelf, so he gets curious and opens it with a box cutter. During their break, their friend, Hank, sarcastically tells Gordon that they got a perfect gig because they're working in an insane asylum. Phil tells him to be grateful, pointing out that they'll make a lot of money if they finish the gig early. He discloses that they'll get a $10,000 bonus if they finish the job within the week. When the guard brings them the keys to the gates, Jeff asks him why the hospital was shut down. The guard explains that several mental institutions were closed during the 80s due to budget cuts. Mike points out that it wasn't just the budget cuts that caused the shutdown. He recounts that there was a scandal involving a patient named Patricia Willard in 1984. Patricia was committed to the hospital in the 1970s due to manic depression, but when she underwent repressed memory therapy, she recalled the horrible things that happened to her. Her father forced himself on her three times a week when she was 10. On top of that, he also brought her into the woods, where her parents and grandparents performed horrific rituals wearing black robes. They would make her watch while they cut out the heart of a baby and drink the blood. Mike tells them that the phenomenon, known as the Satanic Ritual Abuse Syndrome, happened across the US in the 80s. Patricia was about to sue her own parents, but she abruptly dropped the lawsuit. Her parents have apparently discovered that a physical examination on Patricia the previous year indicated that she was a virgin. Mike discloses that the parents countersued and won the case because the memories gleaned from the therapy never happened. While carrying equipment to the building, Phil notices that Gordon has a limp. When he asks about it, Gordon tells him that he pulled a muscle. Phil is worried about losing the bonus, so he suggests replacing someone on the team with Craig McManus, who works American Yankees. He assures Gordon that Craig will leave the company when he hears about the bonus. He points out that Craig is more experienced than Hank, and he cares more about the job. Gordon is displeased with Phil's suggestion and refuses to let Hank go given their history, but he promises Phil that he'll fire Hank once he becomes a liability. After the rest of the crew leaves, Mike stays behind to listen to an audio tape he found inside the evidence box. He learns that the tape is a counseling session of a patient named Mary Hobbs, who seems to be suffering from a dissociative identity disorder. Mary sobs uncontrollably while she tells the doctor that she misses Peter. 
The doctor then asks her to recount what happened 22 years ago on Christmas night in Lowell. Mary tells him that nothing happened, but the doctor insists that something did transpire that night, and they're doing the sessions to help her remember. Mary grows agitated from the session, with the doctor noting that Mary is putting her fingers inside her mouth to cope. Suddenly, Mike hears a higher-pitched voice asking the doctor if he wants to share a doll. The doctor addresses her as Princess, which is listed as one of the alternate personalities of Mary. The doctor asks Princess what happened that Christmas night, so Princess tells him that they received presents. Mary got a china doll while Peter received a big knife. While their parents were asleep, they went upstairs to play hide and seek. When the doctor asks who's playing the game, Princess tells him that she was joined by Mary, Peter, and Billy. When the doctor asks about Simon, she tells him that she doesn't know anyone by that name. Princess tells the doctor that she's tired, so he tells her that he'd like to talk to Billy. However, Princess tells him that Billy is asleep. Meanwhile, Gordon parks in front of his house and sits by the car waiting. He winces in pain when his pants brush up against his leg. On Tuesday, Gordon suddenly hears a voice as he stares out the window, but he gets startled by Phil banging on the ceiling. Jeff asks Mike about the tension between Phil and Hank the previous day, so Mike explains that Hank stole Phil's girlfriend, Amy. He warns him not to get on Phil's bad side because Phil will give him the most exhausting tasks. Down in the tunnel, Hank comes across an antique coin on the floor while he's tagging the ducks. As he walks further, he finds another coin marked 1883, so he looks around and sees another coin sticking out from a brick. He removes the brick with a pallet knife, and a pile of coins pours out of the wall along with a few other items. As he gleefully inspects his discovery, Phil calls him on the radio, telling him to bring his gear and work with Jeff and Mike after lunch. During lunchtime, Mike listens to the audio tapes in the basement instead of eating with the rest of the crew. This time, the doctor meets Billy and asks him where the altars reside in Mary's body. Billy tells him that Princess is in the tongue because she talks too much, while he lives in the eyes because he can see everything. When the doctor asks about Simon, he doesn't get a response. When Mike goes out to have lunch with the crew, Gordon scolds him for not being there on time. Gordon calls his wife on the phone, but she hangs up on him before he could say what he wanted. While looking through the window, he sees Phil talking with two young men by the generator. He observes Phil suspiciously as the two men walk away from him. That night, Hank drives back to collect the coins hidden behind the wall. While inspecting the items, he hears a noise close by even though he's wearing headphones. He soon continues retrieving items from the wall and finds a sharp lobotomy tool called the Orbitoclast. He puts coins and other items in the bag and starts looking for the exit. While walking around the corridor, he hears a noise behind him while he's inspecting a bottle of peanut butter he found on the floor. He nervously shines the light at the end of the corridor but sees nothing. As soon as he walks away, he hears the noise again. This time, he sees a dark figure emerging, so he runs toward the exit. Hank calms down after seeing birds flying around the corridors, thinking that he just imagined the figure he saw earlier. He gathers his breath as he slowly walks toward the exit, but when he reaches the corner, someone intercepts him. The following day, Hank does not show up for work. Gordon calls him on the phone, but he couldn't even get the answering machine. Mike suggests calling Amy, so Phil asks Gordon to hand over the phone to him. After the phone call, Phil tells the crew that Hank went to Miami to casino school after bragging about finding his meal ticket. Phil asks Mike to call Craig to see if he still wants to work with them. He tells Gordon that Hank's disappearance is a blessing, but Gordon suspects that something terrible has happened. He asks Phil what he talked about with the two men he met the previous day. Phil walks away feeling insulted that Gordon is questioning his performance and integrity, but Gordon grabs him, telling Phil not to walk away from him. Phil taunts Gordon to hit him, but Gordon leaves so he could calm himself down. While sitting on the stairs, he notices his fingers bleeding and wonders how he got those injuries. Outside, Phil vents to Mike, asserting that Gordon has been losing gigs because he's too stressed by the newborn baby. He surmises that Gordon didn't really want to have a baby, and it's compromising his ability to do his job. Mike soon gets tired of listening to Phil, so he goes down to the basement to look at Mary's file. Gordon tries calling his wife, asking her to forgive him, but he doesn't get a response. Jeff arrives and tells Gordon that he's grateful that he gave him a job. Jeff promises that he will work hard, so he advises his uncle not to stress himself out. Mike listens to more tapes of Mary's counseling sessions and hears Mary crying because her family wouldn't pay her a visit. The doctor asks her how she got the scars on her chest, so she explains that she got them from a bike accident. He proceeds to inquire about her alters, but Mary claims she doesn't know any of them. Mary tells the doctor that she's tired and wants to go back to her room, so Billy takes over. When the doctor asks Billy what happened in Lowell, he contends that the doctor already knows exactly what transpired that night. The doctor stresses that Mary needs to know what happened, but Billy strongly objects. The doctor then instructs Billy to wake up Simon because he might want to recount what occurred that Christmas night, but Billy tells him he's scared. While getting ready to go home, Gordon asks Phil the stupidest thing he's done in his life. Phil says that he regrets introducing Amy to Hank. Gordon suddenly blurts out that he hit his wife. He explains that he brought flowers and champagne home last Friday to celebrate getting the job from Griggs. When he approached to kiss Wendy, she turned around and accidentally poured boiling water on his leg, so he slapped her. He regrets hitting Wendy over an accident and assures Phil that he loves her. He reveals that he's been staying at a motel since that night and asks Phil not to let the other crew members know about it. Phil tells Gordon that the young men he was talking to the other day were graffiti artists, 
and he told him never to set foot in the hospital again. That night, Gordon hears the voice again while he's sleeping in the van. He recalls bringing home flowers to his wife, but this time, the voice urges him to do it, and he hears his wife scream. Suddenly, he wakes up from the horrible dream in his van parked just outside the hospital. He takes a bottle of hydrogen peroxide and pours it on his burnt leg, causing him to yell out in pain. In the morning, Phil lights up a funny cigarette and takes a puff, but he puts it away when he sees Gordon's van arriving. He tells Gordon that Craig will start working for them the next day. When he asks Gordon if he's okay, Gordon tearfully tells him that he wants to go home. While Jeff operates the tile remover, the machine abruptly turns off, so Mike tells Jeff that he's going to check the breakers. However, Phil comes in and tells Mike to take a break with him. He tells Jeff to go downstairs despite his nyctophobia. Phil tells Mike that they need to deal with Gordon because he's becoming a liability. Mike contends that Phil is just being paranoid, so Phil divulges that Gordon struck his wife. Unbeknownst to Phil, Gordon is downstairs overhearing their conversation. Phil tells Mike that he'll take over because he doesn't want to lose the bonus. When Gordon approaches them, Mike tells him that they're just talking about Jeff. Meanwhile, Jeff goes down to the basement to check the circuit breakers. After plugging in the machine, he sees Hank by the window on the stairwell, but he's unresponsive when Jeff talks to him. Jeff tells him that he's in trouble with Phil and Gordon, but Hank just asks him, what are you doing here? Hank repeats the question when Jeff asks him if he scored big on a lottery scratch-off ticket. When Jeff sees blood on Hank's finger, he leaves Hank so he could tell the crew. Gordon notes that it's lunchtime, so he tells Phil to place an order. Phil, however, tells Mike that they should flip a coin. After throwing it in the air, Mike calls heads, but it lands on tails. Gordon looks at the coin they used and looks suspiciously at Phil. Before Gordon could say anything, Jeff arrives and tells them that he found Hank. However, Phil refuses to believe him, saying Hank's already in Miami. When the crew goes to the staircase, Hank is nowhere to be seen, but Gordon notices a coin on the floor, hinting that someone was there. Phil insists that Hank is in Miami, noting that they all heard it over the phone when he talked with Amy. Gordon, however, points out that Phil was the only one who heard it. Gordon asks Mike to give him a phone so that he could talk to Amy himself. As they continue to argue, they hear footsteps above them. Gordon tells Mike and Jeff to go downstairs to make sure they don't lose Hank, but Phil tells Gordon that he's going with Jeff. Jeff tells Phil that he heard the footsteps going through the corridors of Ward A, but Phil tells him that it's safer down the tunnels. Mike tells Gordon that he's heading to the tunnels because he heard something down there. Before Gordon could object, Mike is long gone. Instead of searching for Hank, Mike goes to the storage room to listen to Mary's tapes. Phil goes further down the tunnels and asks Jeff to wait for him. Before Phil could leave, Jeff mentions that Hank had blood on his hand when he was at the staircase. In the audio tape for Session 9, the doctor asks Billy if he could recount what happened on Christmas Eve. Billy recalls that Mary was looking at her new doll, and she's trying to find Peter in the dark while playing hide-and-seek. Billy refuses to talk about the incident any further, saying Mary doesn't know what Simon did to Peter. Mike skips through the tape after hearing Billy refuse to reveal what Simon did. While Jeff waits for Phil to come back, the lights suddenly go dim because the fuel for the generator is running low. Meanwhile, Gordon hears the mysterious voice while searching for Hank. Down in the tunnels, Phil sees Hank's clothes scattered on the floor and hears him repeating, What are you doing here? Elsewhere in the tunnels, Jeff reaches the narrow corridors of the tunnel and sees the lights go out behind him, so he runs away screaming in terror. Gordon tells Phil over the CB radio that he thinks he found Hank, but Phil sees Hank in front of him sitting in the dark wearing nothing but his underwear and sunglasses. Outside the building, Mike puts fuel in the generator and turns it back on. When the tape starts playing again, a deep male voice greets the doctor. When the doctor asks the altar, Simon, what happened on Christmas night, he tells the doctor to use his imagination. Simon recounts that Peter had been naughty because he scared Mary. Peter crept up behind her and scared her, causing her to fall on her doll. Simon recalls that the accident injured Mary real bad, noting that Mary needed help, so he introduced himself to her. Meanwhile, Gordon has reached room number 444, where Mary was once confined. Simon urged Mary to cut Peter up with his own knife. Afterward, he feared that Mary's parents would get mad at her, so he told her to cut them up as well. Simon then tells the doctor that Mary wanted to do it. Phil soon finds Gordon in Mary's room, staring at the pictures of Wendy and Emma. Jeff runs outside crying hysterically because of his nyctophobia. Soon, he reaches the van and grabs the CB radio to tell Gordon that he's by the van. When an unseen crew member arrives, Jeff explains that he freaked out because the lights went out, but then the crew member attacks him. On Friday, Phil asks Gordon to come back to the building, saying he found the one responsible for mysterious incidents. Meanwhile, Craig arrives at the facility and marvels at the beauty of the building's facade. While walking around the ward, Gordon is shocked to see Hank lying on the floor. Phil tells him that Hank has become a liability, adding that Hank brought it upon himself. When Gordon accuses Phil of killing Hank, Phil tells him to wake up and take a good look at Hank's body. Gordon removes Hank's glasses and learns that he is still alive, but he has been stabbed with the orbitoclast in the eye. He tells Hank to hold on and promises to get help. Phil hints that Gordon shouldn't tell anyone about Hank because if people find out about him, they will discover the others. Gordon suspects that Phil hired the two men to kill Hank, but Phil insists that Gordon's asleep and needs to wake up. When Gordon yells that he's wide awake, Craig arrives and calls out to him. 
Gordon turns around, but when he looks back at Phil, he is no longer there. When Craig approaches him, Gordon holds him down with a headlock and stabs him in the eye with the orbital quest. In the audio tape, the doctor asks Simon why he urged Mary to kill her own parents, so Simon explains that Mary allowed him to do it. Gordon starts recalling that he attacked Hank at night while he was wandering around in the tunnels, disoriented. Simon tells the doctor that all his other hosts always allow him to use them to murder people. Soon, Gordon finds the dead bodies of the other crew members lying on the floor. He recalls killing them one by one without the victims even suspecting him, except for Phil, who was killed when he accused Gordon of attacking Hank. As he stares out into space, he hears Phil's voice telling him to wake up and remember. Soon, he recalls going home bringing roses to his wife. When she accidentally spills boiling water on his leg, he slaps her. But Gordon didn't stop there. He keeps attacking his wife and stabs her to death while hearing Simon's voice urging him to do it. Later on, Gordon calls his wife with an empty cell phone case, asking for forgiveness and telling her that he wants to go home and hold his baby. On the audio tape, the doctor asks Simon where he lives, so he discloses that he resides in the weak and wounded. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.